What's up, people? It's your man, Herb Lover, coming from your mama's basement. <clears throat> man, when Kevin Garnett, did I say Kevin Don Garnett? God dang it, I meant to say Kevin Durant. Why do I get Kevin Garnett and Kevin Durant mixed up? Anyway, when Kevin Durant stated that no one wants to be in that, in that, in that, uh, what you want to call it, around LeBron because it's, it's, it's real toxic. Um, now I know the LeBron Knights, they're going to disagree with me because that's what LeBron Knights do. They're going to disagree because they got their blinders on and they only see one way and that's the LeBron way in front of them. They don't look to the sides. And I'm watching Twitter and I'm watching fans, you know, which, you know, LeBron Knights saying that, you know, uh, all this pin on Luke. And you see the Laker fans talking about, oh, it's on Luke. I mean, not Luke. I mean, well, Luke in the front office. Then you have some fans who understand it. It's on everybody. I'm going to say like this, all right. First and foremost, it's so toxic right now. It's because you got the trade deadline coming up. Everybody's name is being called. So all the names that are being called, they're a little frustrated. We don't know what was said when these guys came with these one-year rentals, what was said in the front office, what they agreed upon. And now all of a sudden, you got the likes of JaVale McGee and Beasley speaking out against Luke Walton. When Luke Walton called them out about, you know, not passing and, you know, and not moving in the flow of the game, whatever you want to call it, just in the locker room. But let's make sure we understand this. Sometimes situations like that happen regardless because, you you know, you're tired of losing and things can, you know, you get frustrated. We're human beings. It happens. There's no one on the earth that can sit there and say they they don't move without no emotions. Everybody has emotions, so you have to understand and realize that. Now it was reported that Lance Stevenson was one of the other persons, but Lance came out and, and quoted like, you know, if you're gonna put the truth out there, put it out. You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but he ain't had nothing to do with it. It was basically just Beasley and Javale McGee. Now I told y'all in a couple videos before that Javale and Luke Walton be going at it. You know, um, I know a lot of people ignored it, and I said it because if you notice, Javale McGee is not starting it, and and Avika is starting and I know it was before um, you know uh, when JaVale went out with his pneumonia situation but there was something that was said I think JaVale might have tweeted something or whatever it may be I, I, don't re I don't recall it and you know Luke Walton brought it into question and that's where the fire blew up between these two so you've been noticed that JaVale McGee has not been getting minutes has not really been playing to what he was playing when he first came came to the Lakers but see the fans who don't really do their research first they will say well JaVale McGee he's, he's, he's struggling and he's not doing right this and that no there's something going on there's a lot of tension building up this is the same reason why I don't say too much about um, Kyle Kuzma and Josh Hart because when you do your research you'll see that both of these guys are playing with injuries but a fan who does not do their research will just look at it from face value or watch highlights and say well Josh Hart and, and uh, you know uh, Kuzma are not doing good my god it sucked balls oh my freaking no, you just got to look at things. That's why I try to make sure that, and I'm don't get me wrong, I'm not the perfect person because I can get things wrong too. A lot of guys have corrected me in the comment section many times. And a lot of times I might, if I get a chance, I go back and I apologize to them if I get a chance. Or I might miss overlook the comment. Or well, now we got a chance to really, you know, got a chance to reply to the comment. But there's been a lot of tension going on. And it's understandable because right now the trade, you know, the trade line is coming on. Everybody's name is being thrown in there. So a lot of people are frustrated. Lou Walton is getting the blue ball. And I got to talk about Lou Walton once again because once again, you got the LeBronites that's coming in that don't get it because they just started watching the Lakers as of this year and all highlights of Lonzo Ball. Other than that, they don't really watch the Lakers. So they don't really know what's going on. So I don't take them with full value. Only a true NBA player, I mean, well, a fan who watch all teams and you know has a, a non-biased opinion i can deal with them but the people that are just bias you just gotta ignore them and not to be disrespectful because they had their own opinion but it's no point of going to a battle with somebody who already's drowning and you wonder why you try to pull them out but they want to continue drowning you know what i mean you can't stop them from drowning so you pull your hand in again like, get that out of me i want to drown just let them let them talk you know what i mean at the end of the day life would be so much grand and so much beautiful if you just let a person talk Stop trying to dictate to a person how they must move and act. Opinions and opinions. If we didn't have all opinions, we'd all be robots. What the system is trying to make us anyway. But I'm getting off topic here. Now, the tension build up, you know, between Lou Walton and all of them. Everybody calling Lou Walton, you know. Now, all of a sudden, they tell about, they, you know, uh, JaVale McGee and Beasley talking about the minutes and the rotation. This is something I've been saying for the last three years with Lou Walton. But, you know, I'm just a little guy in the corner that no one really pays attention to. Just, you know, my regular family that checks in on me to see, you know, my videos and all that. To make them laugh and all that. But I've been telling you guys over and over again. This is the reason why I don't get into uh, debates or discussions. When people talk about, you know, uh, you know our ex-players um, um, like D'Angelo, Julius and all them. And the ones we got now. I don't get into heated discussion because a lot of people do not 
do their research. They do not, you know, they just basically go off whatever is put out there in front of them and they just take it for face value. I've been saying before that Luke Walton was terrible when it came to rotation and time management. I've been saying about the free throws that they should be making these guys, you know, after every game when they practice to go hit free throws, to break that mental spell, to get a shooter, you know, a shooting coach and all that. You know, people ignore me. You know, I ain't everybody, but majority of people ignore me. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not, my thing is this. My problem with Luke Walton this game was this. First guy, remember, Kyle Kuzma and, uh, Kyle Kuzma and, uh, and Mo Wagner was hurt. Let's, let's make sure we understand that. Mo Wagner was hurt. So, because these guys were, oh, not Mo Wagner, I'm sorry. Kyle Kuzma and Josh Hart were playing hurt. My only problem with Luke Walton this game was that he did not utilize Mo Wagner. He was, he came in, he gave us a little energy. And that's the time you seen him. The last next time you seen him was fourth quarter when we get blown out that's my only problem is that Lou Walton had I don't know if he had minute restrictions or you know like you know like you playing a video game and you say well I got to make sure this guy gets 10 minutes in you know you know get his rank up a little bit that's that's how I'm looking at it when he coaches coaching like he coaching the NBA 2k that, that, that's all I can say because like the hot hand you the hot hand goes out you and, and you'll probably see the hot hand when they cool off they come back in and they go 0 for 7 where it may be all right so we played the Gold State Warriors we had a chance to beat that team you know, and you know we played pretty good to like the last four, fourth quarter. Everything fell apart. Everybody just went ISO. And Lou Walton had a right to say something to him. The only problem, like I said, had with Lou Walton was Mo Wagner. Other than that, he had a right to say something to these guys. Beasley, two wild shots, putting the ball on the floor like he breaks, he bringing the ball down now and going ISO. Lance Stevens, he didn't really say Lance Stevens. Lance Stevens had a lot of bad plays. All right, Javale McGee. I only gonna say about Javale McGee is this. When you when you have and I'm not taking them away for Rondo, but at the end of the day, Javale McGee is nothing more than a lob. But you know somebody that catch lobs like a DeAndre Jordan. That's it. Do we have any low post move? Probably like two or three. That's it. Abika probably had better low post move than him, but Abika was not used at all. I mean, yeah, here and there, but when Abika was getting the ball, it was like at the high post. It wasn't like back to the basket where he could make easy layups. He had to work his way down there. What happened is that somebody was coming over to knock the ball out of his hand or double team Abika because they knew that once Abika get the ball, they go double team him. But there was a lot of times where when 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 the Warriors went small, they did not take advantage of that and go to Abika. They Abika wide open a couple times, not wide open, but you know had a little guy on him. They totally ignore that. So there's a lot of factors that's drawing in. That's a part a part of the coach, Lou Walton's rotation, his playbook, his style of play, all that's drawn in. Now we already know that the, the tension is building up that, you know, Le, um, LeBron James camp saying that they want Lou Walton fired. We know about that. Alright, that's no that's no rumor, that's a true fact. So you gotta keep in mind if Le, if LeBron James can't want Lou Walton out of there, you gotta think about it. they saying it, then Le, uh, LeBron is saying that. LeBron is saying that, let's be honest. They're not gonna say this is not gonna come and say it without LeBron the forehead of it, he's not going to put himself out there because he don't want to look like the bad guy. But we got to understand and realize, like I said, we already knew that when LeBron come to L.A., there's going to be a lot of uh, tension and all that stuff going on because everybody loves LeBron. And now, I mean, everybody talking about the media. The media, not even worry about the fan, but the media. I mean, they just want to make sure that this guy, because right now LeBron is, LeBron name alone sell tickets. So they're going to do whatever they can to make sure the Lakers get in that Western Conference Final to play against the Golden State Warriors. Because they know a lot of people are not going to sit there and watch the Golden State Warriors versus whoever. They got to make sure that the Lakers play the Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference Final, and then whoever go to the um, the, you know the um, to go to the the NBA Finals, that the ratings going to drop because they already know Golden State going to win. So it is, the Lakers and Golden State is the big commodity right now that they're trying to push. This is why Adam Silver, um, before LeBron came to LA, he was thinking about making it where um, um, what is it like the the top 16 teams making it in the playoff, whatever. And then the bottom, the, the bottom seed played the top seed, something like that. But it was like basically getting away with East and West and letting all the teams play together. LeBron like, no, don't, let's not do that. You know, that's why that was all coming about because at the end of the day, it's about revenue. It's strictly a business. Yeah, we as fans, we get caught up in it because we emotionally attach to some players and stuff like that. And we want to see the team grow and all that. And we don't want to see the team being bandied. And then we got fans that don't really care. They just want to win the championship now, which I respect both opinions. That's what it is. Both of us had different opinions. We, diff we agreed to different things. But Lou Walton should not get all the blame of what's going on with the Lakers um, front um, Lakers um, team. Let's be honest, the front office should be blamed because I told y'all in my videos a while back when I made a video about Lou Walton calling up Ty Lue to talk about LeBron when he should have been talking to LeBron himself. LeBron had only texted him later on when when, when Palinka and Magic were sitting there talking to LeBron. Lou Walton should have been there too. That's why I said at the end of the day, Lou Walton, be honest with you, should have been packing his bag and get the hell out of there. Talk to Jeannie. 
I'm going to resign. Let me get out of here because they had not included Lou Walton and none of the ordeals. This is not Lou Walton team. All right, let's make sure we understand that. This is LeBron's team, which still to me don't make any sense because LeBron needs shooters. So I don't know what the hell they putting together, but the whole thing was, that's why I said today, you got to look at Magic Johnson too. Because Magic Johnson said, we're going to a different dynamic. We're going to do a little different than what today's NBA is pushing. You know, everybody's pushing shooters, but we're going to attack the basket. And which was good for the Lakers. Don't get me wrong. Because they were trying to go back to that old style play where you attack the basket, jump shot, whatever you may be. But it didn't, it didn't fall through. Now, don't get me wrong. Before LeBron got hurt, we were, uh, what, 21 and 14 before he got hurt? We were actually starting to play pretty good. It was in the fourth uh, place in, 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 um, in the Western Conference. Then LeBron goes down. <clears throat> right by the time that Carmelo Anthony got, you know, pushed away from Houston, he goes down. Now we got the AD situation about. So a lot of tension is flowing up because these guys are being pushed into the, um, into the trade talks. They're frustrated because they're not getting the minutes. You know, I don't know what was promised for them when they came to to the Lakers. Even though they only one year rental, so we don't know. You know what I mean? JaVale McGee probably the most out of all of them. And I know a lot of fans at the beginning of the season, oh yeah, but they were all on JaVale. Now JaVale having a couple bad games. Matter of fact, probably a couple games ago, he just had a good game too. Only played like 21 minutes. I think he had like, what, 17 points? Was it 17 points? 11 boys, something like that. I can't remember. So he had up and down games, all right? <clears throat> but at the end of the day, we sit here complain when somebody had three or four bad games. Oh, well, they, you know, but they forget about when they were doing good. We have a short, a real short brain span. In this, I mean, in this generation, we have a real short um, brain span. We forget about all the other things, all the other tangibles. We only worry about what we see right now at that particular time. And that's a shame. That's a shame. But Lou Walton should not be blamed for everything. If I'm a Lou Walton fan, do I do I like Lou Walton? To be honest with you, as a person, I, I respect him. But as a coach, hell no. I don't. You know what I mean? But I dealt with it because Lou Walton is part of the organization. He's our coach. I'm not gonna keep making videos saying get rid of him, get rid of him, get rid of him. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna do that because if I can deal with the young players, I can deal with Luke Walton as well. And don't get me wrong, the young players got a lot of things to work on, and I was willing to deal with them so I can deal with Luke Walton because I look at it like this: over the course of time, Luke Walton, I believe, will learn from his mistakes. But right now, this is not Luke Walton team because this Luke Walton team, he had shooters on the team. If this was Luke Walton team, he'd have Brooke Lopez instead of Javale McGee. Let's be honest, he would have got shooters. So this is not Lou Walton team. So before we blame Lou Walton, we got to look at LeBron too. And we got to look at the front office as well. Like I said, the front office, they made moves with LeBron of who they wanted to bring in. This was not Lou Walton's idea. It was all LeBron and all them. Okay, Rondo, Beasley, JaVale McGee, re-signing KCP, um, Lance Stevenson. That's all LeBron. All LeBron. LeBron and Magic and them. They're not going to just bring in a, a, a elite superstar and just put, a, put together a team without him, without, um, without, consideration of looking at him first and say what do you want and this is what LeBron told him because Brooke Lopez was still available they choose not to pick up Brooke Lopez they still have opportunity to get shooter matter of fact Kyle, Cor um, Kyle Corver just got traded I think what the Dallas or them whatever they could have got him so there were opportunities but the Lakers still didn't move they didn't move because why they stuck to what they got me personally I think that this is what I'm thinking and this is my opinion I think that LeBron James Magic Johnson Palenka are all cahoots and they just want uh, Genie Bus to finally say, you know what? Go ahead and let uh, Luke Walton go. That's what I'm thinking. Get rid of Luke Walton. Get rid of all the young guys. Bring AD in. It's a LeBron James show. That's all it is. That's that's the whole thing in a nutshell. You know, you could you could sit there and argue with me all day. Fact is fact. History proves everybody wrong. All you gotta do is look at the Cleveland Cavaliers. Look at the Miami Heat. That's all you gotta do. You gotta look at them. And I know a lot of fans don't want to hear that. But that's, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. You just can't bang Lou Walton for it, what he's doing because you look what he got. You, he only can play the hand that's dealt to him. A lot of his players are playing injured. Kyle Kuzma, Josh Hart are injured right now. He only played him a certain amount of minutes. Kyle Kuzma played pretty good. Well, he played, he, I think he had not played pretty good. Sorry, he had a, um, he played a, a bunch of minutes. Let me look at his stats. Let me look at his thing real quick. You know, this dumb thing on pop on. This thing always pop on. All right. So you look at Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma played 32 minutes. He was 4 for 12. Now, you look at Brandon Ingram. He was 9 for 21, right? Now, let's look at this. If Kyle Kuzma would have took 9 more shots, he probably had almost as identical stats as Brandon Ingram. He played 7 minutes left than Brandon. Brandon was 9 for 21. Kyle Kuzma was 4 for 12. So, like I said, if he take 9 more shots, him and uh, Brandon Ingram probably stats would probably be almost the same. Or he probably hit him by a couple points or something like that. Um, at the beginning, they all struggled. I mean, they struggled against Golden State, but they still had a chance to get back in the game. I'm not going to really talk about it, man, because right now there's a lot of fiction going on with them. Um, it is what it is. Uh, and I'm telling you like this. And I want y'all to understand, y'all keep talking about AD, 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 man. 
DeMarcus Cousins played 25 minutes. He struggled from the field, but he was 7 for 7 from the free throw line, 1 for 5 from the three point, right? He had 10 boards, 4 assists, 2 blocks, 18 points in 25 minutes. And, and to be honest with you, he outplayed all our centers. He outplayed all of them. And most of his shot was basically, think about it, he took 5 three pointers. So if you take away the 5 three pointers, he actually was 4 for 10 for the field goal. 4 for 10. Um, but I just want to say that Steph Curry is the hardest to that team, man. If Steph Curry, when Steph Curry was, uh, you know, not making shots, that's about an opportunity right there to win. But at the end of the day, you cannot blame just Lou Walton. You got to blame Magic Johnson them as well because they did not give him the uh, the arsenal to actually run his offense. And then you got to blame LeBron James because that's what LeBron James is. And I know a lot of fans, like I said, the LeBron, they go say, oh, well, great blame LeBron. We're used to it. We can blame LeBron all the time. <coughs> Let's be honest. I mean, you know, it is what it is. You can sit there and try to shoot a code and try to, you know, and try to um, deny it all you want, but it is what it is. You know, let's be honest. I mean, all this, listen, we never had this much tension in LA, probably with Kobe and Shaq the last time, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I'll be honest with you, that's the last time, you know, and, and probably towards the end, but that wasn't really nothing. Only for the Lakers fan to follow. But before that, you know, this, just one year, we got this much tension already. I'm like this, I'm at the point, man. Whatever y'all choose to do, um, the front office, go ahead and make the move. Trade all the young guys away. Go ahead and build around LeBron James. Do what you're going to do regardless because that's what you're going to do anyway. So there's no point to keep crying about the young players. They're going to do it regardless. They're going to trade the young players away. It, you know what I mean? Let's go ahead and get rid of them. Go ahead and make the move so that way all this tension and all this hype and all this stuff can just die down so we can get back to playing basketball. I'm a little sick now. I'm catching something in my chest. But just let's get back to the game of basketball. But I just want to make sure y'all understand that you cannot just blame uh, Luke Walton. Yeah, we know his rotation, his time manage is terrible, but you got to look at the hand that's dealt to him as well. You know what I mean? He don't have no shooters. That was LeBron, Maggi, and Palinka idea to bring these guys in with no shooters. They wanted to go a different route, which I don't really understand because the way LeBron James run his system, he needs shooters. So I'm thinking like this. I think they just want to get Luke Walton fired. That's why I made that video a while back that Luke Walton might get fired. He might be gone by the All-Star break. Or he might be gone at the end of the season. I told you guys, all he all he hold on right now, the only thread he got holding on right now is Genie Bus. That's the only thread that's holding him on. But I'm telling you at the end of the day that they're gonna round getting rid of Luke Walton. And I'll be honest with you, if I was Luke, he should be happy and, and, and excited to go back and be an assistant uh, coach with Steve uh, Kerr. And from my understanding, I think him and Steve Kerr was talking in um in a, what in a, um the hallway or something like that for like 10 to 15 minutes reminiscing. So you never know, he might be already talking to Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr probably gave him the cue, like, man, look, they let you go, you can come back to us. You be a system manager for me again. And I know Steve Carroll would take him back. You know, or somebody else would take him on that on his shoulder. Might, the Clippers might take him. Um, they might bring him on that on that on that as a system coach thing. I don't know. But anyway, it's your man Urban Love. Like share, subscribe, get in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Oh, another thing, real quick. There was also an article that came out. I meant to drop this. I forgot. This this, this video is getting too long. There was an article that came out that and it was linked but then they, they deleted it. It was an article stating that Alonzo Ball being traded to the Phoenix Sun. It says a done deal. Um, Lakers just waiting to ink, ink, ink it all up, whatever. So, personally, I had talked to uh, Lake Show and uh, somebody else on Twitter. I forgot who it was. Please forgive me. And, oh, I think it was Kevin Bass or Kevin, Kevin, I, Kevin, I can't hear, Kevin something. And we was talking to Twitter. And, uh, let me see if I can pull his name up. Because he's, Kevin, let me see if I can pull his name up. I don't want to get the brother's name wrong. I can't pull his name up. Shucks. Well, I think it's Kevin something. But Kevin, forgive me, brother. God damn, she fast. Oh, my God. I'm on the wrong thing. Woo, she fast. Oh, forgive me. Forgive me. Anyway, it was Kevin something. But look, check this out. All right. There was an article that came out that stated that uh, Lonzo was being traded. Oh, Kevin Davis. Calvin Davis. Calvin Davis. That's his name. KD4000. That's his uh, Twitter account handle. And uh, my man Late Show, the Late Show for out. But anyway, we were discussing and, and he brought that up, the article. And, and Late Show said he seen it uh, when he was out or something like that. Now, here's my thing. My thing is this, if this is true, it makes sense only because Lonzo Ball already stated that he don't want to play for New Orleans, the New Orleans Pelicans. Even though New Orleans Pelicans would love to have Lonzo Ball. But I don't know how true it is because they deleted it. So it might be true, it might not be true. So I don't want y'all guys to buy into the rumor unless we see it for full fact, unless somebody come out and actually announce it. But it was it was brought to my attention that, you know, through my two buddies on Twitter, and Late Show who does make YouTube channels, he's going to be making videos sooner or later, but I know he's just doing got some personal things that he's taking care of in his life but we, we talked about it and we shared that that Lonzo Ball is going to might be going to Phoenix 
And I told him, say, well, if this is going to happen, most likely it's going to be a three-way, a three-team uh, split or something like that. It's going to be a three-a three-team trade, and which makes sense because the Lakers don't really have too much to offer. I mean, what what they want? I mean, what? But listen, you got to remember, Dell Demps is the protege of Greg Popovich. Him and Greg Popovich talk. Greg Popovich nine times out of ten probably told them Dell Demps, "Do not take what the Lakers are offering you with all them young, young players. Hit them where it hurts. Go get a couple of those first-round draft picks." So the Lakers could be damaged after LeBron James leave. Get a couple of them first round draft picks. So they get struck. I know a lot of fans say, well, we could pick up another free agent, blah, blah, blah. That's true and all. But you got to think about how many years these people going to sign on to these other teams. Four years, whatever it may be. So LeBron James right now is his first year. Next year be his second year. When these guys start making a contract, will be four years. So we'd be, what, two years probably out, in and out of, of other stars? But we don't know. I don't want to get into all that. But anyway... It's a three-team trade. This is what I'm thinking. Three-team trade between the Pelicans, the Suns, and the Lakers. How true it is, I don't know. Just my opinion according to what the deleted article stated. I had to go look it up myself to make sure, you know, that this article was true. Now, like I said, it's still a rumor to me because it was deleted. But it makes sense. They didn't they didn't give uh, details on who the Lakers were giving away or, or, or who the Phoenix Suns were adding in the trade. It just said Lonzo Ball was going to Phoenix and the Lakers were to let him know why, you know, why he's out injured or whatever it may be. Now, keep this in mind, if that does happen, do Lonzo Ball stay at the Suns? I truly believe no, because once his contract is up, his father is going to try to get him to play for a team that's a big market team like the New York Knicks or the Chicago Bulls. I don't, And I'm not saying the Phoenix Suns are not a big market team, but they're not up there with the New York Knicks, Chicago Bulls, and likes like that. And he want to be the, the main dominant ball handler. And I know that his father is going to be pitching for him to go to New York Knicks. I think that's the main team that he would like to go to. That's my, that's my, only, my, only, my only thing. So how true it is, I don't know. I just want to throw it out there to you guys about this ordeal. But keep this in mind. Dell Dimps is the protege of Greg Popovich. And Greg Popovich is going to tell him to cripple the Lakers. Because in reality, if, if I'll be honest with you. If Greg Popovich never probably talked to Dell Dimps, Dell Dimps probably took probably two of the top two of our top um, young players, a draft pick, and a couple of uh, journeymen, or whatever it may be. He probably went with four players and a draft pick and probably said, okay. But he talked to Greg Popovich, who he looked up to. Greg Popovich said, look, do them like I did them. If they want, if they really want AD, take the whole farm plus let them get like t- and make sure that you get a couple of first round draft picks to cripple them because remember you got to meet them in the West, which makes sense. So anyway, I just want to add that in there. But look, you guys have a blessed day. Take care. Love you guys. Be safe out there. And keep this in mind. Regardless, if we have different opinions about what's going on in LA. We still LA fans. Our opinion is just our opinions. That's all it is. It's barbershop talk. With yours truly, Urban Lover. That's it. We all having discussions. We're not in the front office actually making the decisions. So there's no point for us to get mad or get upset with each other. When you're in the barbershop getting your hair cut, and you and your boy talking about a team that you know that you know a team that he like and the team you don't like, y'all gonna be going at it, but y'all not gonna be beefing like y'all ready to fight and all that. So let's keep it at a minimal, guys. Remember, this is all just barbershop talk. It's no point of getting upset, getting all emotional and all that stuff. If we uh, disagree, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with being di- disagreeing. Nothing wrong with it at all. But at the end of the day, we do want the Lakers to win. Now, me, like I said before, I prefer the longevity of winning, like building up a tradition. Um, a, a, fr- a fantasy, I mean, uh, I said fantasy. Uh, a, 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 a dynasty, like how much, basically like the Golden State Warriors. That's what I'm looking at. That's the reason why I think that Jim Buss and Mitch Kupchak went and got Luke Walton because they were trying to build their team up similar to the Golden State Warriors. It never came into uh, intuition because, you know, Jim Buss and Mitch Kupchak are no longer here. But I got to take my hats off to Jim and Mitch because they're the ones that made good moves. Don't get me wrong. Some of the players that, that are now no longer with us, those guys made those moves for. So we got to respect them for that. But anyway, um, like I said, can't blame it. Can't put it all on Luke Walton. Yeah, Luke Walton at fault, but you got to also blame the front office and LeBron James as well. If you not, if you only blame one particular person, then you just bias. I'm just being honest. With that being said, y'all know what it is. Take care and stay out of my mama's basement because she ain't got no pancakes for nothing, you suckers.